Well, good morning, beloved church family. It's good to be with you again. Our hope is that everyone had a great Thanksgiving and hope to find you in good health today. Stephanie and I want to welcome you again to celebrate seniors. And I love saying that again, because that means we're together. If this is your first time here, we want to thank you for coming. We hope that you'll be focused, that you'll be comfortable, and that you will love worshiping the Lord with us today. We look forward to spending this service worshiping with you, friends, and also our families. We want to say hello to everyone. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, we're getting ready, ready for our roll call. That special hello to all the nursing facilities where we minister, but we can't do that presently due to the coronavirus that's still running rampant. So to our friends in National City, we want to say hello to those of you at Castle Manor Nursing and Rehab to our friends at Friendship Manor, and to our friends at Windsor Gardens Convalescent Center. In Chula Vista, our friends at Frederica Manor, Assisted Living and Senior Retirement Community, and Canterbury Court Senior Living. In Bonita, California, we want to say good morning to our friends at Sunrise Senior Living and down by the water in Imperial Beach, California, our friends at Sun and Sea Manor for Alzheimer's and dementia. And in San Diego, we want to say hello to our friends at our home church, Ocean View Church, our friends in the Summit Senior Class. Good morning to everyone. We want to give you the verse of the day, the verse that you can apply to your life. And that verse comes out of Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2, where it is written, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night. Let us get going with a word of prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Blessed Lord, we are gathered here today before your throne. We bow before you. We are unworthy of your goodness but through the grace of Jesus Christ, may each one of us be glorified in your name. We are gathered to bring you our praise and our thanksgiving. We come to show our love and to exalt you for your power and goodness. Today, God, open the floodgates of heaven and give us your reign of blessings and allow us to be refreshed through you. We look forward to the fellowship and our opportunity to know you and to serve you better. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the book of Psalm, chapter 66, Verse 16, it is written, Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. Join Stephanie and I as we sing, I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story. <laughs>
of Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 it is written the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ join Stephanie and I as we sing a familiar song what a friend we have in Jesus people really need to hear and the words to it connect deeply you see it's good to know that through the ups and downs the good and the bad and the ugly of life that our God's there through all of it he's there no matter what you're going through we have this hope and this trust that not only is God with us, but he's also waiting for us on the other side. What an encouraging thought. It allows us to go about our walks by faith and deal with our struggles or whatever situation we are in that much stronger. In Romans 8.28, it is written, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This is through all of it, through all of it. There are 
days I've taken more than I can give And there are choices that I made that I wouldn't make again I've had my share of laughter, of tears and troubled times This has been the story of my life to know that that he's always there through all of it and today I want to speak to you about encouragement and that you should be an encourager in the scriptures 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 4 and 5 this is what the Word of God says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort, our comfort is abundant through Christ. All of us need encouragement to keep going, to keep growing to keep the faith and to live with courage. We live in a discouraging world. Television advertisements 
They're designed to make us feel bad about ourselves and to feel better if we buy their products. <laughs> the world screams at most of us that we are inadequate. Depression and disillusionment are epidemic. And places that should be encouraging, like our homes, our schools, and marriages, are more than often not. When life is tiring, when you are struggling with your sin, when your family members aren't saved, when the bills aren't getting paid, when school is difficult, when you find work exhausting, and when your health is failing, you have loved ones who are hurt, and the future doesn't look too good, it looks unsure, and you have many good friends leaving. It is so easy to be discouraged. So easy. You see, discouragement is a thief. It steals your vitality, your zeal in life, your joy, your peace, and your contentment. Stephanie and I want you to be aware that if discouragement dwells long with you over periods of time, just realize that discouragement's friends will soon join the party. And the friends' names are fatigue, hopelessness, despair, self-pity, depression, doubt, and bitterness. And be aware that sometimes discouragement can be so strong in your life that you even don't want to go on living. It happens. You see, discouragement is dissatisfaction with the past, with your past, and it's a distaste for the present and truly a distrust for the future because it's a result of blindness. It is having ingratitude for all the blessings of yesterday that God has given you. It is unawareness of the presence of God in your life and unbelief in the promises of his word to you. It is when we have nothing to rely on or we forget our blessings and we start looking to our circumstances. That is when discouragement begins to take hold. When you're filling your head with all these circumstances and no room for God. Instead, what, what we need is encouragement. We need hope and peace and the knowledge that the Lord God knows our troubles and that he has great concern and compassion for us. Believe me, he's not leaving us unloved or uncared for. He isn't. The best way to be encouraged is to keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. In him, you can have comfort and peace and encouragement. You need to seek and find him and his words. And by faith that you have within you, rest in him. So be encouraged because God is a God of mercy and a God of comfort. In, verse, in that verse 3, it is written, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. In the Greek translation, the word mercy means compassion, pity, 
mercy. And it is something that's, that is felt in the heart. In God's very heart. His heart. He feels mercy toward you. He is the author of mercy. His mercy towards you brings salvation. The forgiveness of sins and deliverance from eternal damnation. That's hell. And this because of Jesus. Because of Jesus' sacrifice. Because of the blood that Jesus shed for you. God is the God of mercy. In the book of Psalm, chapter 86, verse 5, it is written, You are forgiven, you are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you. The word in the Greek translation for comfort means exhortation, comfort, and encouragement. That is why the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. In John 14, verse 26, the word is rendered as helper. The Holy Spirit is named as helper. Comforter, helper, all this shows you that God is a God of comfort, a God of exhortation, and a God of encouragement. All comfort comes from God, who is the God of comfort, the God of mercy, and the God of love. But some of you may ask the question, how is the comfort received from God? That comfort you're looking for. First of all, by faith. Because God says he is the God of comfort, then we need, you need, to believe it and act upon it. That means you need to trust in him. Trust God and receive the comfort as he provides it, as he provides it. Secondly, you can receive that comfort from others. You see, God will use his people to comfort you in times of trouble. He will send someone to encourage you with words, maybe a helping hand, or possibly a shoulder to cry on. Thirdly, you can receive comfort through his word by reading and hearing the word of God. The words of God are so beautiful and wonderful and are given for our instruction, guidance, and encouragement. Lastly, receive comfort by the Holy Spirit. You see, he is called the Comforter. He indwells in you. Where's that? He resides inside you. So take encouragement because God is there in your misery and your pain. Now in verse four, it is written, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That misery and that pain that I just spoke about, that's called affliction, misery and pain. It can also be translated as tribulation, trouble, anguish, persecution, persecution, and burden. You see, this affliction can come in all different shapes and sizes. Let me list a few for you. 
their sickness. That's an affliction. You could be having financial difficulty. That's an affliction. That's misery and pain. Loss of a loved one. An unsure future. Nothing to look forward to. Even an auto accident is an affliction, misery, and pain. But also, and listen, because this is very important, affliction occurs in the heart. In the heart. In that place where we get frustrated, confused, and hurt. You see, we live in a fallen world. That is why affliction, affliction, that misery and pain run so rampant. It takes a world with trouble in it to train and develop Christians so we can develop for our high calling as children of God. Afflictions are a way of making you better that misery and pain, that thorn in the side, is a way of making you better. And that, that is how we sh it should be approached. That's how those afflictions should be approached. Like the testing and strengthening of your faith through the comfort and mercy of Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry whether or not he's going to take care of you. He already has at the cross on Calvary. And he is currently doing so, and he will continue to care for you. I want you to be encouraged because you can be an instrument of comfort to others. Verse 4, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You see, this is how we glorify God, through comforting others. We are conduits of comfort. Being used by God should make you feel good. It isn't the only reason, but it feels awfully good when the Holy Spirit of God uses you to do good. Praise God that you even had an affliction so that you can be able to help others. You see, because of your trials, you have been able to help others better, better than you've helped yourself because of that trial. Understand that God just doesn't comfort us to make us comfortable. He comforts us to make us comforters, just as the Holy Spirit, comforters. Look at these examples I'm gonna give you right now, just to show you. These are examples of trials and what they produced. Do you know what a lighthouse is? A lighthouse built where it can be seen by ships, built by shipwrecked sailors, sailors who were shipwrecked, who were damaged, who were hurt, needed that lighthouse at certain times. Roads, the roads that you drive on, they were changed. That's part of this country's infrastructure. They were widened, made bigger and better by mangled motorists, by many accidents, by many deaths. And look at this one, hospitals. Trials produced hospitals were built by those who were sick, those who needed surgeries, those who needed medical attention. So thus out of those trials came hospitals. So be encouraged because the comfort that you receive comes from God through Jesus Christ. 
verse 5 says, For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. Our comfort is abundant through Christ. This means that all comfort, all encouragement, and all hope that you receive through people, through the word, through circumstances of yours are filtered through Jesus Christ. Therefore, the comfort received is completely pure, completely good, and completely right. And the comfort is received by faith. Where our suffering is abundant, so is our comfort. It is spiritual comfort received by faith, by active choice. Listen, encouragement belongs to you as a Christian. You do not have to live in a world of hurt and doubt. You don't have to live alone or to weep in solitude. You have the body of Christ, that's the church, to lift you up. You have the word of God to teach you. Plus, the Holy Spirit indwelling in you to warm your soul. You see, we serve a God of encouragement and he's waiting to show you mercy and to show you love. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, on him alone. We need to trust in him. And now is the time. Now is the time to let Jesus Christ know your desire is to receive him as Lord and Savior. It is written in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It doesn't matter the mistakes that you've made in life. It doesn't matter if you continue making them. It doesn't matter about the regrets in your life. It doesn't matter that right now you're unable to find grace and peace in God. Because right now is the time when you can change all that. You can find that grace and peace in God if you allow him to take away the guilt that you're feeling right now, the conviction, and let him replace it with his love, an eternal love that cannot be taken away if you mess up or you regret again. You see, you, you will always be able to run back to our God. He's waiting for you with open arms. I want to encourage you. Stephanie wants to encourage you today to start a new life with Jesus if you haven't done that already. You can have a real lasting peace through a relationship with him. But the problem is all of us have said, done, and thought things that were wrong. All of us or doing sin, committing sins, wrong, evil against others. And these things separate us from God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it is written, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we have some good news for you. Jesus died in our place. He died in our place so we could have a relationship with him and the Father forever. He's reaching out in love to you, and he wants you to be his child. Right here today, you can choose to ask Jesus 
to forgive you of your sin. And you can ask him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it is written, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word, whosoever, that means you. And in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it is written, If you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. For it is by our faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. Are you ready to confess? Are you ready to step out on the water? Would you pray with me, please? I come to you in prayer, Lord, asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is your son and that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I ask right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. Today I repent of my sins and I will worship you all the days of my life because your word is truth. And I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And it is in Jesus' holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Stephanie and I, all the saints, the heavenly hosts, we want to say welcome. Welcome to the family of God. We're celebrating inside, inside our spirits, inside our hearts. And we're going to continue to celebrate for you. We hope you come back next week. And we're going to pray for you in your walk with God. We also want to mention that if today is somebody's birthday, we always celebrate those birthdays. Stephanie and I and all the saints, the heavenly hosts want to say happy birthday to those of you who have a birthday today. Be well. We want to give you the word of the week. The word of the week that you'll marinate on till next Sunday is compassionate. God is compassionate. We hope that you guys have enjoyed this service today. It was so good being with you again. Like I say, we love saying again because we love being with you. So until next Sunday, God bless each and every one of you. Be safe. <music>